Let's go back to where the others are. Ayaka said to Kawa, I don't like the idea of leaving them where they are while surrounded by danger. She checked to make sure that Kawa had calmed down and wouldn't bolt the minute that she moved. Getting off of Kawa, Ayaka began dusting herself. Her school uniform was covered in dirt. It's not like my clothes didn't already need a good washing before this. Ayaka thought to herself, sighing mentally. She imagined the community bathing shops where she could soak in the steaming water and relax. Ayaka offered a helping hand to Kawa, seeing the woman trying to get up. Instead of saying something nasty, Kawa quietly took the hand that Ayaka offered. Helping the woman up, Ayaka was shocked by how light Kawa was. It didn't mean that she was a strong person, but instead indicated how much weight the older woman had lost during the time wandering the deserted area. Though Ayaka still couldn't help but eye the woman's breast, which was several cup sizes bigger than her own. Ayaka tried not to think about what the woman looked like if she had a typical diet. I guess not everyone is equal in this world. Ayaka sighed to herself. Thanks, Kawa said once she was standing and gently patting her skirt and crop top. Sorry for being so rough with you. Ayaka scratched the back of her head, embarrassed of being so rough with someone else. Shaking her head. No, it was the right thing to do. Kawa said in a quiet voice. I bet it felt even better after the way I've been treating you. She eyed Ayaka. Ayaka blushed at the statement, trying not to think how it felt good to tackle the other woman. I don't normally act in that kind of manner. It was the first time. Ayaka could only imagine how much her mother would lecture her if she knew what Ayaka had done to another woman, especially to someone older than her. What do you think that vehicle was doing out here? Kawa turned to face the road close by. Remembering the armored vehicle with the self-defense force logo on the side, Ayaka shook her head. I don't know. Maybe it's someone that had escaped from the conflict. Or they could be heading to meet another unit close by. She raised her shoulders, uncertain of the objective. There was a growling sound that was audibly heard coming from Kawa. It was shortly followed by a growling sound from Ayaka. Kawa placed a hand on her stomach, though she didn't complain about how hungry she was. They had both gone for a long period without having eaten anything, and hearing their stomach rumbling in protest became a normal occurrence. What do you think we should do? Kawa asked in a soft voice. Ayaka was startled to hear the woman ask such a question, especially in a such a gentle manner. Memories of the woman being bossy came to mind. Kawa turned to look at Ayaka. I feel like the way we've been going can't be a long-term solution. Nodding, Ayaka said, I agree. The problem is our current location isn't a place with a lot of resources for us, who can't really function without modern provisions. Pointing to the road, how about we try traveling on the road? If the military vehicle was using it, then it could indicate that either a base or resources are nearby, Power suggested. Ayaka was hesitant to follow such a plan. Worried that we may encounter others with ill intentions? Kawa asked. Exactly. The fact that people are still using the roads means that we run a higher risk of running into others who may not have pure reasons, Ayaka said. She became quiet trying to figure out a solution. 
After thinking about the problem, Ayaka offered an alternative. Instead of walking on the road, how about we stay inside the forest while following it? Kawa's face brightened. Then, if someone appears on the road, we can stay hidden until we can discern their intentions. Ayaka saw the expression on Kawa's face and realized how different it looked compared to when the woman smiled in order to manipulate Masuyo. It was as though Ayaka was getting a peek at the woman's true self before the nightmare had begun.